Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order the regular scheduled meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Planning Board, August 17, 1999. First order of business is the approval or corrections to the minutes of the previous meeting. Are there any comments from the board? There. Yes, Nancy? There were a couple of typos, but nothing important. So that I move acceptance of the minutes. <clears throat> we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. The minutes are approved. Correspondence received in this meeting's packet, a letter from Cape Elizabeth United Methodist Church in regards to 1231 Shore Road Restaurant, a letter from our town manager in regards to the 1231 Shore Road Restaurant, a letter from our public works director in regards to the 1231 Shore Road Restaurant, zoning news of July 1999, and Wright versus the town of Cape Elizabeth legal brief. In addition, on the podium this evening were three pieces of correspondence. One from the Cape Elizabeth Conservation Commission regarding the Golf Crest facilities, the new public works facility. Two, a letter from the undersigned abutters of the Scout House property in regards to the 1231 Shore Road restaurant site. And three, a letter from Linda and Everett Johnson, Jr., in regards to the Scout House site. <clears throat> Any concern from board members regarding the correspondence received? Hearing none, the first order of old business, Public Works Facility Site Plan. Will the applicant come forward and identify yourself, please? Mr. Chairman, I'll recuse myself. From yes, Mr. Emery. Good evening. Uh, my name is Steve Harding. I'm the town engineer. I also work for Oast Associates. Um, since the last meeting, we've, we've uh, submitted a few more pieces of information that was requested at the last meeting. Um, we've, if I could briefly go through those, um, we've added uh, layout information to the uh, design plan. We've uh, also submitted a letter from the water district that there's adequate uh, water to serve the facility. Also submitted another letter from the water district that says there's adequate treatment capacity at the treatment plant to serve this facility. Uh, we've added some more uh, notes on the landscaping plan regarding the preservation of existing trees, uh, which was a comment from the, the last meeting. We've also added some uh, small plantings along with the large trees that we had proposed for the buffer area, which will buffer the parking lot from the abutter, uh, Ken Moon over here, and that, that came as a direct conversation with uh, Mr. Moon. Um, we've added information regarding the, de uh, the entrance signs to the facility. There'll be an entrance sign to the recreational field at this drive. There'll be another entrance sign here to the public works and the transfer station facility at, at this location. We'll have a directional sign here, uh, which will uh, direct users of the facility that the transfer station is up here and that the public works is, is to go to the right, and then we'll have another entrance sign here identifying uh, that the public works facility is, is in this direction. Um, we've also submitted a letter from a traffic engineer, Bill Eaton of Eaton Traffic Engineering, uh, basically summarizing what, what we had talked about earlier in our last meeting, that uh, this project is not anticipated to affect the traffic capacity on Spurwink Avenue and that there is adequate site distance at both uh, drives to meet the state standards as well as the town standards. Um, we've also added some details on the sheet. There's another detailed uh, drawing in the application package. Uh, and that was done as a matter of clarification. Uh, we do have the Conservation Commission memorandum, which is dated uh, August 16th. Uh, they suggested that there would be a connecting trail from the recreational field to the uh, proposed recreational trail around the facility. I, that obviously can be done uh, simply by just making a spur from the parking lot to the new proposed trail. And we certainly would do that. They've also requested that they have some say as how these trails are laid out in the field so that no large trees are impacted and 
Um, we would hope that the contractor would have common sense to, to do that, but we see no problem with the Conservation Commission being involved in that. Um, they've also uh, mentioned in their comment number three that they would like to see that the all the runoff from the paved surfaces be collected and filtered somehow. Um, that That's going to raise some problems with us. Basically, the facility as it's designed here, this this paved area and this gravel area around the back side, they're all, it's designed to sheet flow across the parking lot and enter a buffer area around the facility before it gets into the uh, wetland areas around the facility. Um, what the Conservation Commission is suggesting is that we we collect that runoff and then treat it somehow and then discharge it in, in points, which uh, kind of goes counter with what the DEP recommends in this type of facility. And it kind of defeats the purpose of having a buffer around your facility between your facility and the, and the wetland area. The buffer is intended to get rid of any or treat any, any runoff uh, sediments and siltation that may be um, present in the runoff off the paved area. Also, as part of the DEP permitting proce process, will be required to develop a spilt prevention control and countermeasure plan. It's called an SPCC plan. And we'll need to have that in place before the building is occupied. And that document will basically review how chemicals are handled at the facility. And it'll, it'll review how the, the material is uh, brought to the site, how it's handled on the site, how it's operated, and what to do in case there is a spill. Um, this, this, will, this document will require that if we have any substantial quantities of hazardous material inside the building, <coughs> those be double contained. There'll be provisions for if there is a, a spill at the fuel island, what to do to go out and, and put speedy dry down or filter absorbent pads and how to handle that material once it leaves the site. Um, most of the chemicals that are used at the public works facility will be used inside the facilities. We'll have uh, floor drains and a wash down system, a uh, wash bay system which will go through an oil water siltation um, treatment facility before it's discharged in the stormwater. So we feel that the plan as designed adequately addresses water quality and, and that's something that the DEP is going to concentrate on their review. So if you have any further questions. Before we open the public hearing, are there any questions or comments from the board regarding just the new information that was presented this evening? Hearing none, we'll open the scheduled public hearing at this time. Public hearing is now open. Anybody who wishes to speak on this application, please come forward to the podium and identify yourself, please. No one is moving, so I shall close the public hearing. The applicant could return to the podium. The application is open for board discussion. Any concerns? Should be noticed uh, for those of you in present this evening here in the auditorium and those watching at home is that we have had a site walk. Uh, we have now had a public hearing. But we have had numerous workshops with the applicant, and uh, the application is very complete, and all of our concerns and questions have been answered in the past. Seeing no hands raised is Mr. Parkhurst. I'd like to make a motion. Thank you. Motion for the board to consider finding of findings of fact. Number one, the Town of Cape Elizabeth requires site plan review or resource protection permit and conditional use review for the proposed public works facility, two recreational fields, associated access drives and parking areas, walking trails, and dedicated open space. Number two, the project also requires permits from the Department of Environmental Protection. Number three, the application substantially complies with Section 19-9 Site Plan Review, Section 19-8-3. Resource Protection Permit and 19, excuse me, Section 19-5-5, conditional, conditional Use Review. <clears throat> Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans, the materials submitted, and the facts presented, the application of the Town of Cape Elizabeth for Site Plan Review, Resource Protection Permit, and Conditional Use Review for the proposed Public Works Facility. 
two recreational fields, associated access drives and parking areas, walking trails, and dedicated open space be approved with the following condition. Number one, that there be no alteration on the site until all permits required by the Department of Environmental Protection have been issued. Second. <clears throat> we have a motion that's been made and seconded. Is there any further discussion from the board? Nancy? I just wonder how the um, permits are, are coming along from the DEP. Uh, we've submitted an application to the DEP, and we, uh, all indications, we've had several, we've had a couple of site walks with them, we've had uh, two or three meetings with them. All indications are that they're very favorable towards the project and that they're happy with the way that it's been presented, and we anticipate getting those within a, a month or two. I have one further question. Is if everything proceeds on schedule, when will you begin preliminary construction? Hopefully we can begin this fall. We'd like to get it out to bid and get the project started. Thank you. Further questions from the board? All those in favor of the proposed motion signify by raising your right hand. It is unanimous. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda, <clears throat> 1231 Shore Road Restaurant Site Plan, a request by the 1231 Associates for site plan review of a proposed 40-seat restaurant located at 1231 Shore Road, section 19-9, site plan completeness. We will begin by having the applicant present the project, and then the board will have to limit its discussion to making a finding of completeness. We will go through the completeness checklist and do, do so at if the applicant could come forward and identify themselves and begin with a general discussion of the application, please. Good evening. My name is Helen Muther. My husband, Paul Woods, and I are the principals of 1231 Associates, which is the company that's the applicant tonight requesting uh, completion approval of the site, of site plan application. We're very excited about presenting this proposal to you tonight. We feel that um, this low-key restaurant that's being proposed at small scale is a good fit with the town center. We do understand that you've received some um, letters from some of others who have concern about the project. We've been working with them. Paul has met or spoken with all of them. And we're trying to be responsive to their concerns on an ongoing basis. I'm not sure how much you all know the history of it. We've looked into it a little bit, but this building has been called the Scout House for a long time. Uh, I understand it occurred because the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts used to live there, work there and have their meetings there for many years. However, for um, over a decade, the house has been sitting there in disrepair and abandoned. In fact, in 1991, I think it was, um, the sit town council condemned the building and the prior owner fixed it up some, came in and got site plan approval for an office space um, in 1992. The proposal that we have models after that site plan approval with the same general layout. The uh, property lines, as you can see here, first abut on the easterly side, <coughs> an existing right away. And as you all may have noticed if you've been driving by, there's a very nice tall uh, fence that runs along the border of that right-of-way, which is um, where the neighbors have put up along the right-of-way, I believe. In any case, it blocks the view of the um, building on this side. 
On the western side, the property line runs right along here. The driveway is actually on our property. Back in 1993, the prior owner granted an easement for access um, to the abutting landowner. And as you can see here, um, the prop, all the driveway in this area is actually on our property. The goal that we, we seek to attain in this site plan is to preserve the existing s streetscape. We asked Terry Dewan and associates to take a look at it from a landscape perspective and taking into account the town center requirements. We also had Jim Fisher and his team at DeSlores Associates do all the engineering and surveying work, again, trying to bring this town center concept together. The, what we were trying to do also is to bring back to life this building as it has always existed, but is crumbling. The front section of the building will be retained and restored. However, the back portion is, is not able to be restored, and so that will be taken down what put back in its place will be a new building similar to the old with just a minor expansion in the back. We've also tried to keep the flow as is described in the town center designs so that you'll have a sidewalk here for pedestrians. You'll have a walkway up here so that pedestrians and bikes, bicyclists can get it, come in here. The plan is a at least one set of bicycle racks there. Also the front facade will remain in place and we'll have um, a cottage garden effect. We also tried to break up the parking as much as possible to provide green areas um, there as well. Although it's were permitted under the town center district to have a 75 seat restaurant, we're trying to keep it as limited as possible as well as the parking limits our, our abilities as well. So we're proposing a 40 seat restaurant. We hope at some point to have it open for breakfast, coffee, that kind of thing, lunch, and, and dinner. And hopefully year-round, depending on how, the, um, how business goes. I'm going to let Jim Fisher actually get up and do all of the specifics of the site plan requirements. But I would ask that you uh, grant us a completeness of, of tonight. And also, if, we, if you give us some feedback on what your thoughts are on the application so far, we can help to uh, make modifications if necessary before the public hearing. Jim? Thank you. I'm uh, Jim Fisher from Delorier and Associates, and as Helen mentioned, I'd like to be able to uh, discuss with you this evening a little bit about the uh, plans that we have for the Scout House area. Uh, Helen has uh, <coughs> uh, touched significantly on the uh, aesthetics of the project and what they would like, uh, what she would like, uh, in conjunction with her husband as 1231 Associates, uh, to propose and then do with this specific restaurant. What I'd like to do is take that a little bit further and address any concerns that uh, the members of the board might have, and uh, echoing uh, Helen's uh, uh, inquiries about uh, getting some feedback from you uh, toward the end of this presentation or after we are completed with it uh, as to uh, what your feedback might be to us, any suggestions that you might have uh, relative to your concerns, etc. Uh, that's the primary purpose that uh, I would like to uh, have yet this evening. Of a more technical nature, and please uh, let me know if you, uh, this gets in the way of anything, uh, as Helen had mentioned, this is the, uh, the conceptual design that we have. Uh, it was completed by a landscape architect, Terry DeWan and Associates. What I would like to address uh, more specifically here is the site plan, which you see before you in your packet. Uh, one of the things that I'd like to talk about before we get going too much further is to state that uh, prior to submission of this packet, we did uh, submit everything that we had at that time, which was just a few weeks ago, to the town's reviewing engineer, uh, just on our own to be able to nip in the bud, as it were, any questions that he might have uh, as the consultant for Cape Elizabeth that he felt we should address. And there were several, and we have addressed them. Uh, we then resubmitted this packet, or submitted this packet, first of all, to the town in, a, in an official capacity. And uh, it went again, it being the packet went again to the reviewing engineer as well as to yourselves. And he had a few uh, other comments uh, in his official capacity as the reviewing engineer. Those are some of the comments that I would like to address this evening as well. You have them before you in the uh, letter from uh, Ms. O'Mara. Um, 
one of the things that, uh, without addressing everything uh, specifically, as, uh, as Mr. Harding has outlined it, uh, one of the things that I would like to talk about is uh, some traffic information. Uh, we do have a traffic study that has been attached to your packet. Uh, it does indicate that, uh, according to the specifics there, completed by um, uh, William Bray and Associates, uh, that this proposed restaurant, given the capacity of it and the parking that we uh, ha intend to have on site, uh, will not interfere as far as uh, getting into accident or, prom uh, or promulgated accident rates based on the uh, Shore Road 77 uh, uh, intersection there. We, are far, we meet the criteria as far as being far enough away from that. However, he also stated, and we are complying with, uh, a recommendation on his behalf that uh, we, after the school starts, after uh, uh, basically Labor Day, that we uh, conduct a, uh, another phase, as it were, to that traffic study that he's already completed so that we can get more of a year-round picture, as it were, that which is completed in the summertime and that which has been completed as uh, school traffic gets back into norm. Uh, so I would like to say that uh, on behalf of our clients, we are going to be doing that. Uh, and obviously, that's going to be uh, starting after Labor Day. And we will have that information uh, immediately available to you shortly thereafter. We'll channel that through Ms. O'Mara. Uh, parking, there was also a, uh, a question by some of the abutters. And, and I would like to reiterate that our clients living very close to this area, obviously, uh, would like to be able to mesh this into the town center concept as much as possible. They also want to make sure that the abutters' concerns are certainly addressed. Uh, addressed. Nobody wants to uh, enter into a project uh, making enemies of anybody right away. Obviously, we want to make sure that uh, everybody is as uh, contented as possible, uh, given what we propose. Uh, one of the questions that had been brought up uh, and that you may be taking a look at with uh, any restaurant in consideration is off-site parking, or rather on-site parking, is there enough of it? Well, what we propose is, yes, indeed, there is enough parking that is on site specifically for the 40 seat restaurant that is the maximum here. If somebody comes back and says, well, what if, and there are other people, because there's also, that, that may show up, well, there are all, obviously also uh, areas for bicyclists to be able to come in. You can see uh, this particular area right down here, uh, if you can see that, uh, it's got some bike racks there to it. Obviously, there's walking traffic. We're talking about a relatively small village concept right in the center of town, as it were. And we would like to encourage, obviously, that the lunchtime traffic from those people who are uh, engaged in businesses in the area. Uh, well, what does that do to people who may be waiting? Uh, in other words, those people who are walking into the restaurant or biking to the restaurant may actually take up a table or two. Uh, so when people come in, there's still ample place to park, and they're going to wait. Well, where are they going to wait? There is an actual waiting or proposed waiting area inside the restaurant, small though it is, uh, small though the restaurant is. And uh, seasonally, there is also a, a small waiting area that's right outside. This, uh, you see the darker brown shaded area is proposed deck. Uh, so we do have uh, some waiting areas there for these people. Also, we are uh, in negotiations with uh, people who are, are or the buildings that are across the street uh, to provide some additional parking, even though that is not required because we're not looking for it specifically, i.e. planning additional parking elsewhere on site that we could not or elsewhere off-site, I should say, that we cannot plan for on the actual locus itself. Uh, however, we recognize that there is always a possibility if uh, somebody happens to come in one at a time and park their vehicles, and suddenly a van of, vehicle, a van of people comes in and, and wants to park, and they've got uh, no spaces available, where are they going to park? But well, we want to kind of nip that in the bud, as it were, and go forward and uh, be able to tell the patrons of the restaurant, uh, yes, indeed, there are spaces available should you need them. Uh, thereby, rather than just saying, gee, park where you can, uh, we're going to have a recommendation as to where they may be able to park, and those negoti <coughs> negotiations are ongoing, uh, although they are not required. One of the things that I'd specifically like to talk about, and uh, we have our uh, engineer here this evening as well, is uh, an issue over stormwater. Uh, that always seems to be a catchphrase, uh, particularly lately over the past couple of years, uh, about what's happening as far as the stormwater is concerned, what's there now versus what's going to be there. Talk to me in layman's terms to explain it to me. What's going to happen when it rains really hard? That's one of the things that uh, I'd like to address right now. The grading of the restaurant, uh, as it is proposed, is uh, very likely going to be changed slightly. And we will be submitting that, obviously, through uh, Ms. O'Meara for, uh, for the next board. Uh, however, the grading at this point in time works as far as the stormwater runoff is concerned. 
the grading that is going to be changing is not going to have any effect, zero effect, on a difference as far as the stormwater is concerned, which is why this evening I want to be able to address that issue to you, uh, again, to get your input uh, from that. You can see on the site plan, uh, the natural topography, or see on your own site plans, the natural topography of this area has got a watershed that's approximately right through here. What that means is that there are two specific watersheds on, on the property. One that flows from this area in this direction toward Shore Road, minimal though it is, and another one, basically two-thirds of the property, uh, that flows ten, tends to flow toward the back of the property. The natural contours of the property right now take this water and they, they basically put it into this section right back in here, put it in the, the natural flow. Uh, it is actually in a single channel effect, i.e., when it rains a little bit, it's like uh, you know, taking a cup full of water or a bucket full of water and tossing it on your driveway. kind of doesn't go anywhere before it just spreads out so far. However, when you get a particularly heavy uh, storm, this single channel effect takes the water from this section and puts it back over to here and channels it, what is now off the site, just off the site, into a low pool that is literally right in this section. Uh, which is approximately about 10 to 15 feet off the back edge of the property. That's where the water goes right now. What we're proposing to do is to change that flow, albeit slightly. We want to channel this water from this section uh, for a number of reasons, which I will get to in a moment, uh, from this section here over into this section here. One of the reasons is that because of the existing driveway to the facility and wanting to take maximum advantage of that relative to leaving as much of the natural vegetation that is in place uh, as possible, uh, we want to take advantage of what's already there. Uh, to digress just slightly, you probably all know the vicinity that we're talking about. There are quite a few older oak trees. Those of us who know anything about oak trees probably realize that they don't grow really fast. Uh, and some of them, while there are some small ones on site, there are some fairly large ones as well. And we want to keep as many of those as possible. Uh, when Mr. Dewan gets here at the, the next meeting, he will probably go into much more detail as far as the uh, the oak trees are concerned, but suffice it to say that we would like to be able to, uh, to preserve what is there to the extent that we can. So what we want to do is uh, have the paved parking area coming up, uh, taking advantage of what's already there, and then come across the back. This concept was approved originally by the planning board you know, about seven years ago uh, for a, uh, a facility that was similar in size, uh, albeit not a restaurant. And uh, it, we basically took that design so as not to uh, exacerbate any bad situations, take something that had already been uh, approved uh, once, not that we're asking for specific approval based on that, but uh, we wanted to take that and basically improve on it, given the structure that we have. So we have designed it such that the water is then going to be com coming uh, across, in a grading situation, across the, uh, the, park, the existing parking lot, to what very coincidentally, or ironically perhaps, happens to be the best soils on the property. Uh, these are all lime and tonnage soils right back in this area. Uh, that essentially means that uh, relative to soils in the area, this is an on-site, these soils are the best. These are the most porous soils for absorbing any storm water that would be dumped onto them, rained onto them, et cetera. Uh, and it just happens to work coincidentally, coincidentally in our favor that way, uh, because we're also channeling them toward the back of the lot. Uh, that is principally the reason why we have designed it this way. Another thing that we have done uh, as far as the uh, drainage is concerned in channeling this water in this direction is to be able to uh, have the sheet flow, as Mr. Hardigan mentioned in the previous uh, um, entity here, that uh, the sheet flow of water would come across the parking lot and then be channeled into what is referred to as a level lip spreader right in this area. This is a level lip spreader euphemistically perhaps is its own small but very effective retention pond. Uh, what it does basically is it, it takes water into it as opposed to just letting it go anywhere, channels it over its length, and when it, it fills up, it is filled up with, uh, with riprap right now, for instance, and when it fills up in this channel, the water will then spread out so it can be controlled as far as where it's going specifically. This spread alleviates two problems. Uh, it takes care of the single channel flow over here, which is uh, promoting a fair amount of uh, erosion, or has promoted a fair amount of erosion, and puts a lot of water back into this area, just slightly off site right now, uh, and that will take care of that uh, by channeling the water in this direction. It also is going to, it being in this level spreader, is also going to help us out a lot, because it's going to take the sheet flow from here, channel it here, spread this water out, 
fill up this level spreader, and as it comes over the top, it's going to be in a controlled situation over its length, down over the best soils of the property, so that the increase based on stormwater management that you see in your packet, <coughs> a slight increase in what's referred to as cubic foot per second, uh, is going to be absolutely minimal. It's already minimal as far as the calculations for the 25 from the storm are concerned. However, when you see it here in layman's terms, what that's going to do is feed a level spread of water into a sheet slightly over the top of this and encourage, it, encourage absorption in the best soils on the site, uh, graded down in this direction so that the vast majority of storm water that now flows off site in the 25-year storm situation in a single channel is now spread over about 25 to 30 feet. It's 25 foot level spreader, spreads out as it comes out of it and gets absorbed in those soils. So we are actually uh, assisting the situation as it now exists, for instance, in uh, trying to channel that in the best place possible on the locust without exacerbating any negative situations off site. Uh, as far as stormwater is concerned, that is the essence of the argument uh, to be able to, uh, to put the, the water in this area. As I indicated before, uh, our clients were in negotiations with one of the abutters uh, to be able to do some uh, grading that was uh, slightly off-site uh, in order to assist uh, that this whole area, I mean, portion of the abutter and our area, in making the grade a little bit more level. Uh, that, has, uh, that permission uh, has not yet been received. Whether it is or not, it, it may, we'll see what happens. Uh, but uh, we are prepared now uh, in negotiations or in uh, uh, conference with our clients uh, to go ahead and actually uh, extend this retaining wall, bring it up slightly, uh, and regrade this as far as height is concerned, but no change in the actual contours as far as the grading of the water in this direction. Toward that end, it will again have no effect. So there are no significant changes proposed as far as that is concerned. Um, one of the other things that we are looking for is, uh, and that uh, Mr. Harding addressed and that we've asked for in the packet, is a uh, waiver from, actually a partial waiver from the planning board uh, regarding showing information on the actual site plan uh, 100 feet away in all directions. We have showed the information that we have for the immediate abutters on either side, uh, well past 100 feet. Uh, in the back, this is all wooded area, naturally wooded area. Uh, the, this is the property of the Methodist Church, which essentially, given a scale here, sits back in this section, uh, right over here, if it were, as it were. Uh, which is uh, a couple of hundred feet further back this way. In other words, there's only woods back here. There's really not a whole lot to show as far as any potential improvements are concerned within that hundred feet. Also across Sherrill Road is a 50-foot wide right-of-way. Uh, we have the, the buildings that are right up here. There's a dentist's office. There's the, the key bank area. Um, I believe there's another. Murray's. Murray's, yes. Thank you. Uh, those are the facilities that are across the streets. So what we're asking for clarity more than anything else on here is that for those two directions, just the you know, raw woods back here, and then the, the businesses that are across Shore Road, uh, that we not show them on this plan, we're going to end up shrinking the plan a lot. It's going to become rather confusing toward that end. Uh, so if we may, that's the partial waiver that we'd like to uh, request of you. There was one other uh, bit of information from the Department of Public Works that we would like to address that we have not yet, uh, Mr. Harding's comments, uh, that we have uh, not yet addressed, but we are. And that is uh, a suggested hookup to a stub that already exists, a sewer stub that already exists to this particular property, although it is not hooked up to the building itself. We didn't do that before because the uh, tie cards uh, available at the Department of Public Works couldn't pinpoint exactly where that stub is, so we couldn't really design it specifically saying, well, here's its exact location. Uh, the Department of Public Works has indicated <laughs> that they would prefer to see that hookup. What that will take, actually, is some excavation to find out where it is. But suffice it to say that that's not that difficult when we start excavating. Uh, we can certainly try to find it and we'll hook up toward that end. Uh, the other concern that we had toward that end that you may see in there is that the, uh, the hookup is three and a half, the, uh, the stub is allegedly three and a half feet underground. Uh, current standards indicate that it should be four feet as far as frost in this area is concerned. Uh, we can still manage that hookup. What it will entail is a uh, fully insulated pipe going to it. <coughs> that is one of the reasons why we ran the pipe partially through the building uh, so that we, we could uh, remain higher than that grade, even though it's underground, to be able to hook up uh, gra gravity-wise to that uh, stub, uh, and also for warmth in the pipe itself. Hence, we'll do the insulation, and that should not be a problem. So that uh, will be addressed as a minor point. Uh, and finally, the, uh, as uh, Ms. Mueller had indicated, the access to the parcel is a, uh, it was, was somewhat erroneously uh, described in the uh, 
uh, feedback from the town engineer, it is actually, the driveway is actually on the Locust property, and the easement that exists is uh, for the, uh, on behalf of the abutter. If there are any questions as far as any of the technicalities are concerned, or anything else, we'd love to be able to address them right now. Uh, and again, get your feedback for anything that we may be able to uh, initiate and complete before the next submission. This time we'll move forward on the completion checklist. <coughs> Mr. Emery. Um, I see in reviewing the town engineer's uh, notes that they, um, for the purposes of moving the discussion forward, they recommend that uh, the planning board deem the application complete. And I'm prepared to do that, but I, I have a long list of issues that I'm going to address, and I want to be sure that the applicant understands by being deemed complete, that simply moves the process forward. Um, there, be, there may be issues with the plans that we don't agree with. The information is there at some level, uh, which gets you into the door under completeness. But certainly don't expect that because you've been deemed complete this evening that there won't be a thorough discussion on all the issues that are typically discussed before the planning board. We don't presume that at all. Okay. Um, and, I, and I guess with that, I would uh, be prepared to uh, offer a motion uh, for completeness. <coughs> Before you do that, Mr. Emery, does the board feel we should go through the completion checklist? That would be a good idea. Maureen, could you help us with that as you have in the past? Sure. Uh, if you look at the, I believe it's the last page of the memo in front of you, um, my recommendation is that you've got two items that could potentially be deemed incomplete. Uh, the first one is under item six, uh, you've been provided with the elevations of the exterior of two <coughs> sides of the building. And the question was, would you like to have elevations of all four sides of the building? Um, the other item was, uh, as the applicant described, uh, providing information about physical features off-site. Um, everything else appears uh, to be submitted in some fashion. Are there any questions? <coughs> questions in regard to completeness? Yes, Tom. Um, as, as one planning board member, I certainly would uh, like to see all four elevations of the building. This is a very tight site, and it's affecting um, by many properties, as you've, you've already, I'm sure, you're well aware of. Um, additionally, because it is in the town center and because there are so many properties affected, I think it's, um, it's a lot of work to go out and ask people to survey adjacent properties. Often you can't get permission to get on adjacent properties, but I think certainly in this day and age of aerial photography and so forth, it would be very wise to have an aerial photo of the area at a scale like one inch equals 100. I think they typically come at 200, which would be readily available and something that would be good for both um, board discussions as well as during a site walk. So I would encourage both of those items to be uh, provided by the applicant and could be as a condition of approval under my motion, under a motion. Further comments in regards to completeness? Steve? <clears throat> Just that I um, agree with Mr. Emery that you know, this is the town center zone. I really, I think uh, the last application we had for this uh, zone, we had elevations of all sides of the building. I think it's only fair that we have it this time as well. Further discussion? I have, I have uh, another point of clarification before we proceed. I want to understand who is preparing what drawings and who's responsible for um, is the is there a registered architect preparing the plans for the uh, building? There is a yes, there is a designer who is preparing uh, them. Not a designer, them. a registered architect in the state of Maine. Okay. The exterior design of the building has been, the elevation drawings you've seen has been done by a designer. There will be an architect who will be working with us on the interior design of the building. Because of the, um, it, it was an existing structure, we've not used an architect for the current elevations. Uh, I'm not clear, we have an architect on the, on the board here, I'm not clear when uh, under health safety and welfare regulations, life safety, fire code, when an architect is required, but I, I would defer to our architect, but I believe under this type of building it, it may be and probably is required. Mark, can you answer that? 
I'm not sure. I'd, it may not be. I know that there, are size, there is a size uh, of a, any non, any size private dwelling can be designed by a designer. And I think most other building types can be as long as they do not exceed it. I believe the amount is 35,000 cubic feet. However, I would need to check in the little handbook for that. And I don't believe this uh, facility approaches that size. Uh, you have uh, an engineer that stamped the drawings. Are you a professional surveyor or engineer? Me personally? Yes. No. Okay. Is the engineer directly employed by your firm, or is he a consultant to you? No, we've got him at our firm. On staff? Yes. Okay. And we know who Terry Dewan is. Just to be clear, I mean, there's quite a few different references here, and I just wanted to understand before we uh, get going here. I'm not trying to embarrass or humiliate anyone. I just want to be sure that everybody understands what's what's going on. The only other issue before we vote, or I make a motion on completeness, is a clarification point that you have a note on a plan regarding raising the building, and the portion that's being raised is suggested to be raised uh, and rebuilt within the side yard, existing side yard setback. That's not an issue of completeness, but while I'm thinking of it, just a note for future discussion. With that having been said, I'd like to uh, make a motion. Uh, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of 1231 Associates for site plan review of the proposed 40-seat restaurant be to be located in the Scout House at 1231 Shore Road be deemed complete with the addition of uh, evidence or aerial photos or plans showing off-site uh, conditions in the town center and uh, an addition of all four elevations of the uh, proposed building. We have a motion. Do I have a second, please? Second that. Thank you, Al. Mr. Parkhurst. <clears throat> Did you want to add to that motion that the, uh, the application be tabled, or do you want to just begin discussion tonight? Um, we are, this is just one. It's not just. We can do one at a time. Yeah. <clears throat> There's a motion and a second on the floor. Is there any further discussion? The applicant has risen with a question. Go right ahead. If I could ask just one clarification. Like, what, did you say aerial photo or a plan to show? Um, if you want to go out and survey all the adjacent properties, more power to you. The only reason I say that is that uh, timing for aerial photos right now is very, very difficult. And also, I think that we actually will be able to get access to those properties that haven't been surveyed yet. I, I think the town already has aerial photos that have been flown recently enough that they would be reasonably accurate. Okay, great. Further discussion from the board on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand on completeness only. Thank you. It is unanimous. Is there any further discussion from the board, or do you wish to act on the application and table it to the next meeting? Mr. Emery? Um, while the applicant had asked for several com any comments that we may have, uh, I, would, I would like to offer some comments if it's Go right ahead, to Tom. do so at this point. Um, I'm looking at uh, your site plan drawing, uh, sheet one of seven. It's very difficult to read the existing conditions because there, there's a lot of cross-hatching and other information, and the existing contours are very light, <coughs> and they're, not, they're either not numbered or they're not numbered very frequently. And a lot of what you're discussing is this issue of drainage. So I think it would be very helpful not only to the planning board, but certainly to our reviewing engineer to present the drawings in such a way that we can read existing contours and propose contours. Uh, the, uh, you indicate that there's a paving limit at your driveway. I'd like to understand what will happen at that point because um, the paving limit, once it goes beyond your, your property line, is still short of the existing uh, width of the driveway. And I can't remember that. I think it's a gravel driveway, but just be prepared for those discussions. Um, we've received a lot of letters. I think you should uh, be prepared to respond to issues raised in those letters. Um, we often get letters that are f filled with smoke and mirrors or red herrings. Uh, I know that you're both uh, aware of what those are and then what the pertinence issues are and just be 
ready to respond to those because the, that's what the board will have to address when the public gets up and raises issues that we now all have the benefit of having seen preliminarily those are the, those are the issues that we will be asked to sure. address in, in our findings and again I th that issue I don't know it doesn't need to be answered now but I don't know if there's any difference between remodeling and raising and rebuilding in terms of grandfathering a side yard set I can I can wait till next month or I can tell you now I, I did double check that with the code officer please tell us now just last week and showed him the plan he gets his own copy and, and he said that um, everything that, that is rebuilt in the same footprint um, as far as he can see from the site plan is just fine and then the new addition meets the 15 foot setback okay good. So as far as I'm aware that is all set all right I think it's a sure it might be a shoreland zone issue where you can only rebuild a certain percentage and all that stuff um, and I think it would be more helpful to have those areas that you're proposing um, that I mean you have different textures here brick pavers uh, there's something that looks like a patio it would be clearer for me if they were just simply labeled as to what they are um, because of cross hatching <clears throat> although the cross hatching can be helpful in differentiating paved areas from unpaved areas there's so much of it uh, it just gets very difficult to read the underlying information so I prefer just to have them labeled as they are in other places. Um, that's a that's one planning board member, and you have the town engineer. But uh, if the town engineer concurs with that, then I think it would be certainly helpful for me. Yes, Nancy. Um, I I take it there is a basement underneath this building. There is a partial foundation. It is not a full basement. It is not intended to be a full basement. One of the problems with that area is that there is ledge, much of it exposed. That which is not exposed is very close to the surface. Uh, the soils that are on top of that ledge are great soils, but they're not really deep, especially in the portion up front, which is where the building is located. As you move toward the back, and I mentioned earlier that the best soils are in that rear corner where we're channeling the water, uh, the ledge is further down. But uh, upwards in the, in the area of the building itself, uh, there's, there's a huge chunk of uh, exposed ledge right in this area, uh, and set, essentially all over it. The long answer to your question is the foundation is only partial built on the ledge. It's about four or five feet underground. So no, there is no foundation currently, and it's not. It's proposed to be rebuilt uh, or remodeled in the front section and then rebuilt in the back uh, as it is basically now. With updated support, obviously. Thank you. Further comments from the board and helping the applicant finalize their application next uh, next meeting? Mark. Mr. Chair, I had a question, a couple of questions about things for including next time, but uh, one of the first things I'd like to inquire about is um, the 15 foot side setback abuts uh, a label on the plan that says right of way. Uh, is that in fact a street or is it a, what is the status of that, that it has a side setback applied and not a street setback? In this section you're talking about? Or the yes, right the, yeah, the plan says right of way there. Is that a, it's not an actual street, however. No, it's not an actual street. It's a, we refer to it as a right of way because it serves more than one home. There are actually three houses, I believe, that uh, are back in this area. There's actually, one that's serviced that's right up front with front to John Shore Road, but the driveway comes off of this section. The other back here where you can see it, and then the other is a couple of hundred feet in the back. Matter of semantics more than anything else. Okay, that's wondering. It appears to be in like a 90, not almost a 90 foot wide right of way. Not at all. It's a driveway. It's a driveway. Okay. Um, one of the things that I was wondering about when the uh, other two elevations are prepared, uh, would it be possible for you to include the, since this is a restaurant, one of the significant features of a restaurant is usually the grease duct exhaust system, which can turn into a fairly large, obtrusive uh, sort of thing. And sometimes it's dealt with in ways that you, it's fairly unobtrusive, and, and sometimes it's right in your face. Uh, could you include that on the next submission also? Sure, it's going to be a part of the building anyway, so if we're going to be showing that particular section, you're going to see it. Yeah. And I was also wondering if it would be possible to see the floor plan layouts that actually show the 40, the 40 seats. They're, they're kind of alluded to right now, but will you have the plans developed further so that we can 
I don't know if I can guarantee that. As far as a site plan is concerned, to be honest, I'm not sure whether it has gone forward far enough to determine where exactly all this an exact layout. Um, I can tell you, and again, a bit of a long answer, I can tell you that just given the nature of the building right now with all of its windows, the predominance of its windows right up front facing the road, that's the ideal place for diners to be. So the suggested area uh, at this point in time is in the front section of the restaurant, which is right here, and then obviously up near where the, the main entrance is going to be. Uh, going a little bit further than that, uh, the food service area is proposed to be basically in the middle section on the easterly side, north being straight up, and then the, uh, the kitchen preparation area is going to be toward the rear. As far as specifics, however, I don't believe it's gone that far yet. Is the, uh, is the door on the east side service and deliveries? Uh, the door that's right back here, you're yes, yes. That's the kitchen, that's the kitchen? That's correct. Essentially. Uh, at this point in time, do you have plans for outdoor seating on the decks? There is, uh, without going too far into it, I think the, uh, the plans right now are that there will be seats out there for people to be able to sit and whether they want to take a few minutes or they get there early based on a reservation or whatever. Um, but I don't believe it's actually been established yet whether there's going to be any food service out there. And obviously we know from the standpoint of parking versus how many seats we can have uh, that there will be no instance of going over the number of patrons that we would be able to serve. Will that be indicated on the plans somehow or other? Um, I suppose, yes, we can Thank certainly you. do that. Thank you. Okay. That's all, that's all I was wondering. Further comments from the board? Tom? Look very closely at you. I'm looking at the, the site plan again, and, and I'm looking at the grading going up the driveway, and it looks like there are contour lines that have been, you have one-foot intervals, and there are contours that have been skipped and haven't, that don't match into what appear to be the existing contours. And it looks like all the water's kind of going toward the building. I think you need to look very closely at that. And that's why I'd like to be able to see the underlying information very clearly so we can make a determination. As you've said, there's a lot of ledge here, and it's a very complicated uh, situation in terms of meeting existing grades. So just look very closely at that and be sure that the next set of plans is uh, extremely clear for us to read, not only the lines, but also the labeling of the existing contours. We can very easily darken the lines. Uh, that's not a problem. I only want to point out that, uh, and it's not really a big deal to us at all, and now that you've seen it in, in somewhat of its clarity, the dark, by darkening the lines there and keeping all the other layers intact, it's just going to darken the whole picture. Yeah. Okay. Mark. So, something else that I was just wondering about. Have you looked at um, how snow storage would affect your level lip spreader design? It looks like um, with the sort of wrong combination of piles of snow and ice, you could almost have water backing in the kitchen delivery door. Uh, it's all within like about one foot of contour sure. in that area. Are you comfortable with the Yes, we have that? looked at that. In fact, that was before we even went into a further I've, design. I've had that happen before. We look at snow. <laughs> what are we going to do when it snows five feet? Uh, and we've got you know, various places to put it. Obviously, 99% the, the of it's going to go right back in this area. Uh, we, can, we can address that now, or we can certainly address it for you and, and members of the public <clears throat> it's brought up in the public area. Would the board like it to be addressed now? The question of snow removal, or would you like to leave that for the next meeting? I, I raised it just as a question having to do with the grading in that area, because you mentioned there would be some tweaking mm -hmm. of the grading, and I was wondering if this, this area is one that would sort of be involved in that tweaking. It's going to be involved slightly in that the, the back section of the parking lot from basically the, uh, the apex of this curve in this section, particularly in this area right back here, is going to be graded a little bit more in this direction. Uh, the answer to the question that you uh, uh, posed is how are we going to deal with buildup of snow in this particular area. The level lip spreader has been over-designed specifically for this. Without certainly getting into technicalities, because I'm not the engineer either, uh, based on the cubic feet per second flow, whether it be from snow melt or from rainwater, uh, from an engineering perspective, unless you're increasing up to two CFF, uh, cubic, cubic foot per second off of a particular site, there really isn't uh, an engineering model that is developable as far as either a spreader is concerned or uh, a, retaining, um, a retention pond or a detention pond. What we have done, however, because we know of the, uh, 
uh, concerns of the neighbors, and we want to make sure that we make it as easy on us as possible and our clients as possible, is to over-design this level of spreader from basically handling uh, one, well, there's a bunch of figures here, but basically it's four times larger than it actually needs to be, to be from an engineering perspective, to be able to uh, collect all the water, whether it be snow melt or otherwise, into it. So when the snow is uh, guided into this particular area right in here, that melt is designed to be able to come into this spreader, and then, uh, again, as it warms and, and uh, fluid flows out of it, it's going to come out in that particular sheet flow. So again, the answer to your question is, once it's piled, it's designed to come into a very over-designed area that's going to sheet flow it out. Thank you. Good question. Steve. <clears throat> um, I think it would be a wise idea, um, given the site, to have a site walk. And <clears throat> with the site walk, I think it would be a very good idea to have all the trees that are going to be removed. I count up a fair number of them on the plan to have them flagged for the site walk. Would the board like to discuss the possibility of the site walk now or after the motion is made? before we close for the evening. Well, let's get her over here. Okay. <laughs> Who's available and when? <clears throat> Remember, it's getting darker earlier, so we might have to go back to our Saturday mornings. This won't take long. We could okay. do it after work or something okay. like that. Excuse me, if I may, what we could do, if you wish, given the proximity to everybody, is flag those trees, and you could do it something on your own. It's, uh, it's a problem between now and then and getting everybody together. As one member, I feel a site walk is important and to invite the abutters and uh, make a lot of <coughs> questions answered that will only be raised at a public hearing if they aren't answered. Therefore, I suggest we schedule it before our next regularly scheduled meeting. <coughs> And would it be impossible to somehow stake where the, um, the parking lot is going to be? Maybe just corners, uh, according to the plan, so we can see how much of the site is actually going to be paved. Certainly. It's been my experience on the board of this. The applicant puts the extra effort into preparing as best as possible for a site walk that uh, you'll gain support rather than lose it. And uh, I can only suggest that to you based on past experience with this board. Absolutely. <laughs> Is a motion in order? Oh, uh, how about a date for the site walk? Get that out of the way first. Pick a day of the week first, and then we'll pick. After Labor Day. After Labor Day. Nancy's leaving town again. <laughs> As long as, long as we have it before the next mm -hmm. meeting. You want to do it just before your workshop in September? That works. Well, we want to give up one evening. What's the date on yeah. I'm, I'm guessing September 7th. 7th. Day, day after Labor Day. Yeah. Be here on <coughs> your children are still in school, Steve. You'll be back. <laughs> it's a busy day. Um, <clears throat> that would be fine with me. And uh, we are going to have representatives from the uh, Apple there to answer questions, correct? Yes, absolutely. That's 6 o'clock. David, you had a question? Eight How about prior to the workshop? Yeah. Yeah, that's what Maureen is discussing, the 7th of September. So we only give up one evening. 6 o'clock. 6 early enough or? 6.15. It's not going to take very long. It's a small site. 6. Okay. 6 o'clock on the 7th. Okay. Yes. Before our workshop. Coyotes are a little louder at night. They're more fun to deal with. Any objections from board members on that date? Any difficulties for the applicant on September 7th at 6 o'clock? All set. Okay. Meet at the driveway? We'll, we'll see how your parking situation pans out when all of us show up. Planning we board can. Not, not put it on the agenda for the workshop. Yeah. 
Whereas ahead. the parking lot has not been built yet, I suggest to the planning board members that we park at the town hall and casually walk <laughs> over. Now a motion is in order. Mr. Embry. <clears throat> we had further order that the application be tabled to the regular September 21st, 1999 meeting of the planning board at which time a public hearing shall be held. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Further discussion from board members? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. Thank you. Before we adjourn, does the applicant have any further questions of the board? If there's no further input or anything that indicates on the top of anybody's head. Uh, Not at this time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. For the public that may be listening on this application at home or here in attendance, feel free to correspond or stop in and see our town planner at any time. <coughs> If there's nothing further to come before the board, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. Mr. Parkhurst, seconded by Mr. Griffin. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Thank you very much. Thank you for those who attended this evening. We are off the air.